name of this story is this. Help me, help me, they're coming to get me. If that doesn't pique your interest, I don't know what the fuck will. Maybe a kick in the nuts. The moral of this story is, be very careful which one of your friends you feed LSD. Now I know that piqued your interest. Here's how this story starts. Old Damien here had an Altoids box with, I'd say, 12 hits of very good LSD. Red gel taps, I can tell you the fucking make. So, I get off work one day and I happen to have this box of LSD with me. Now, for all law enforcement agencies, I don't do these things anymore. I don't condone it, <laughs> unless you can hang. <laughs> so, I leave, I go to my friend Joe's house with this box of LSD. I get there, it's Joe, his wife, my friend Jordan, and his wife, Jen Deal. I get there, we're hanging out, and I decide, well, this might be the great time to feed people LSD. I said to Joe, want to do some acid? He eats three hits. I take six. Pop them. And I look at Jen and go, yo, what's Jordan got to do tomorrow? Does he have anything to do? Does he have to work? She goes, no, he doesn't have to do shit. And I said, hey, Jordan, what do you have to do tomorrow? And he goes, why? And when he opened his mouth to say why, I threw three hits on his tongue. He goes, what was that? Acid. Oh, fuck. Epic. It's one of those things where you get that warm feeling inside, like, I just did something good or terribly bad. But anyway, you look at it, it's a story. And here's where the story begins. Joe's wife leaves to take a friend somewhere else. Jen tells us she has to go to work. Start to drive to work. 15 minute ride, right? I'm like, oh shit, I got an hour before this shit hits. I'm straight. Drop her off at work. Get on 95. I'm fine. Driving, driving, fine. Start to take the highway west. Not so fine. Get about a mile into it. Look at Jordan and tell him, <laughs> dude, if I keep driving, I'm going to jail and or we're going to die. Now, to me, the answer was obvious. Pull over and abandon ship. Leave that car. I will never forget the words the man said to me. He looked at me and went, huh, please no. Just keep driving. Get us back there. I can't do it. Either I stop or we die. That's it. Now, stop or die. <laughs> What's the obvious answer? We stop. I parked in a grocery store parking lot. Catch the taxi. We think we're cool. Dude starts to drive. Then from the front seat, guy gets on the cell phone and all he hears, mm -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da, mm -ba -ba -da. starts speaking Swahili, Bushman, something. Some language I've never heard in my life, which to me was the funniest shit I had ever heard in my life at that point in time. Now, I got the giggles. <laughs> to the point of hysterics. Now it was contagious. Now he starts howling, sitting next to me. Hysterical laughter. The whole ride. 20 minute ride, hysterics. That never stopped. We get to the gate of the apartment complex. We're trying to tell him to code the punch and <laughs> And his answer was, no, you get out now. Get out. I ask him how much. He tells me 45 something. I pull money out of my pocket. I peel off a 20, trying to pay him. He snatches the 20, throws it in reverse, and hits it. At this point, this is when I realize I'm scaring people, and I'm really fucked up. We walk through the apartment complex. No biggie. We're cool. We're going to my brother's house. This is straight. We're in the safe zone. We get to the apartment. On the door of the apartment is a note that every man on LSD dreads. You don't want to get to your friend's house when you're peeking and see a note on the door that says, went to the carnival. Meet me there. Love you, Joe. The sinking feeling that hit me, I can't describe it. I've been arrested. And I didn't have that sinking feeling. Shit. I've been dumped by God knows how many women. Didn't have that sinking feeling. P.
peeking on acid, I saw the word carnival, and, and just something happened in my life at that moment where I knew fear. That is not the place you want to be coming onto some shit. So now, we walk a mile, fucked up, grant you, to the carnival, <laughs> which is on the grounds of a church. Look at me. Really? Do I look like a church-going guy? Packed carnival. Saturday night. Horrible! Drugs are coming on. Start walking around looking for Joe. Can't find him. All I wanted was a beer. So we decide we're going to find the beer tent. Find the beer tent. Calm the big man down. We finally find the beer tent. Here's kind of how it went. I'm going to reenact this. I stop. I look up. The beer tent is filled with police officers. A lot of them. Now, when I say a lot of them, I mean 30 or more, dude. Now, when you're peeking on acid and you lift your head up and you realize that you're standing in a tent full of cops, here's kind of what you do, which is what I did. You go... Not good. Not good. So now, the trip has really taken a sudden turn to the motherfucking left. Now I'm bugged out. The cops know. So, we dip. Finally, after about an hour, walking by the fucking tilt-a-whirl or some shit, and here comes Joe getting off the ride. It was like seeing Jesus in the flesh getting off the carnival ride. Ah, he had a halo and everything. Thank God we found our fucking boy. No, I didn't realize he didn't tell his fucking wife that he had taken acid with us. And his wife goes, Joe, what the fuck did you do? Get back to the house, she hauls ass. Fuck you guys. Now it's just me, Joe, Jordan, and our friend James. Somebody gets the fucking brilliant idea that some whack-ass anime is the thing to watch. We start watching anime. Everything's great. Jordan's having a good time. I'm having a good time. Joe's over there chilling. James is laughing because we're all tripping. Jordan goes to the bathroom. Everything's great until he comes out of the bathroom and sits down next to me and grabs me. They're coming in the windows. <laughs> and to which I replied, <laughs> Who the fuck's coming in the windows, dude? They're coming in the windows! And at this point, we realize he's not joking. In my drug-addled fucking stupor, we thought sugar will bring him down from that high. So we're in the kitchen making him coffee with a lot of sugar. Apparently what went through his head was, they're poisoning me. They're in there making something to kill me. Phone rings. Jordan grabs it. Goes, Jen, help me, help me. They're coming to get me. Slams down the phone and jumps up. Ha! To which we're like, whoa, whoa, buddy. I have never seen a skinny Jewish boy juke me like the NFL ever, dude. Dude, he did one of these. And out the fucking door. By the time I got to the door, gone. Three, four hours pass. We finally calm down. We're watching the movie, and the phone rings. I hear Joe on the phone. Yeah, I know Jordan. What? He carjacked you. Wait, okay, didn't carjack you, but he jumped in your car? What? He called the cops on himself. What? He ran from the cops? Um, okay, if we see him, we'll handle this. As Joe hangs up the phone, door opens, here comes Jordan, walking in the house. Now, when I say looking rough, now, have you ever seen a friend of yours come in the door? Twigs in his hair, leaves in his hair, pieces of bushes hanging out of the shirt sleeves. He walks in and we go, yo, what did you do? I don't want to talk about it. Can I lay down here? Lays down on the couch. We're hovering over him. Jordan, what did you do? I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Can I just lay down? Can I stay here tonight? Night. Moral of the story is, don't feed your friends psychedelics when they don't want them. This has been another one of my true Hollywood stories. I'm out.